Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we're going to study the lateral compartment of the leg. If you all remember this figure, this was the tibia, this is the fibula. So basically, the leg is divided via the deep fascia into three compartments. Today we're talking about this lateral compartment, we've already discussed the anterior compartment. The lateral compartment is basically bound, as you can see, anteriorly by the anterior intermuscular septum, posteriorly by the posterior intermuscular septum, and medially by the fibula bone, all right? The lateral compartment of leg consists of certain important structures. For example, the deep fascia of the lateral compartment at the ankle joint is specialized to form the peroneal retinacula, the superior and inferior peroneal retinacula. Just like we studied the superior and inferior, extensor retinacula in the anterior compartment. So what are the boundaries of these retinacula? So let me just draw it first. Excuse the really rough drawing. So suppose this is the fibula bone. This is the lateral malleolus of the fibula bone. This is the calcaneum bone, which is a bone of the foot or the ankle joint. So this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. We have two types of retinacula. The first is the superior peroneal retinaculum. The superior peroneal retinaculum is basically bounded by the posterior border of the lateral malleolus anteriorly and the lateral surface of the calcaneum bone posteriorly. So this is the superior peroneal retinaculum. Then we have the inferior peroneal retinaculum that is basically bounded by the superior surface of the calcaneum and then posteriorly it is attached to the lateral surface of the calcaneum. So just beneath the inferior peroneal retinacula there is a uh, tubercle on the calcaneum bone known as the peroneal tubercle. This tubercle splits the compartment deep to the inferior peroneal retinaculum into two parts which is for the two muscles of the lateral compartment so there are two muscles of the lateral compartment called the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis these are the only two muscles you need to know for the lateral compartment of the leg so the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis tendons basically pass deep to these retinacula here they have a common synovial sheath when they're passing beneath the superior peroneal retinaculum. However, when they come deep to the inferior peroneal retinaculum, the peroneus brevis passes above the peroneal tubercle, while the peroneus longus passes below the peroneal tubercle, and these two have a separate synovial sheath beneath it. All right? So that was all about the peroneal retinaculas. Now let's talk about these two muscles. These both arise bo from the lateral surface of your fibula because we're talking about the lateral compartment. The most important nerve in the lateral compartment of your leg is known as the superficial peroneal nerve, all right? The superficial peroneal nerve is the chief nerve of your lateral compartment of the leg. It is responsible for supplying these two muscles, which are the major muscles of the lateral compartment of the leg. The superficial peroneal uh, nerve basically arises at the neck of the fibula from the common peroneal nerve. So first from the CPN, it arises at the neck of fibula, which we've talked about in the deep peroneal. We've talked about it multiple times. What happens next is that the superficial peroneal nerve runs in the substance of the peroneus longus muscles. So as we all remember, the peroneus longus muscle is coming from the lateral surface on the upper and middle one third of the fibula. So this entire peroneus longus inside its within its substance runs the superficial peroneal nerve in the upper one third. What happens in the middle one third of your leg is that the superficial peroneal nerve then it runs between the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. So the peroneus longus was originated from the lateral surface of the fibula in the upper and middle one third while the peroneus brevis is originating in the middle and lower one third from the fibula's lateral surface. So first it was running in the substance of peroneus longus then it ran between the two peroneus longus and brevis and finally at the junction where the upper two third of the leg is becoming the lower one third of the leg at that junction the superficial peroneal nerve pierces the deep fascia and why does it pierce to become superficial it pierces the deep fascia so that it can give cutaneous innervation to the skin of its supply so where does it supply the skin basically the lower part of the lateral side of the leg and the entire dorsum of the foot for, except for the areas that are supplied by the saphenous nerve, the sural nerve, the plantar nerves, and the deep peroneal nerve. So, 
where does it supply so we all know that this area which is the lateral side up to the tip of the little toe is supplied by the sural nerve we've already discussed this we know that the area till the ball of the big toe is supplied by the saphenous nerve we know the first interdigital cleft being supplied by the deep peroneal nerve so the area that is left is supplied by your superficial peroneal nerve Hence, the branches of the superficial peroneal nerve are muscular and cutaneous. The muscular branches supply peroneus longus and brevis, while the cutaneous branches are supplying the lower lateral side with the dorsum of the foot. All right. And finally, what are these two muscles? These two are the major everters. As all the compartments of leg have a characteristic, the anterior compartment, as already discussed, had the function of dorsiflexion. The peroneus longus and brevis do E version of the foot. All right. So suppose this is the foot. This is the E version when the lateral border of the foot is lifted. It's called E version. All right. So these two are the chief E verters of your ankle joint. They both originate from the fibula and both have the same nerve supply by the superficial peroneal nerve. So that was all for the lateral compartment of the leg. Really hope you understood. In the next video, we'll talk about the dorsum of the foot and the medial compartment. Thank you so much for watching.